So I have a bunch of footage um, from the last couple weeks, uh, like two weeks, that I just have been really lazy in editing. Um, but I wanted to make this video today very fast. Um, I lost my train of thought. Happy FIFA Day. The World Cup began. Um, Saturday, USA versus England. USA is favored to win. Uh, but that's not why I'm making this movie. And this movie. I'm an actor now. I am making this YouTube video to inform you of a documentary I just watched. Excuse me, why fall? Um, the John Cazale, or Cazale as it would be in Italian, documentary on HBO. Last year, my mom and I went to Brighton Park and watched Dog Day Afternoon in the park. And it was incredible. I mean, if you don't know who he is, you're obviously not much of a lover of film because he was Fredo in The Godfather 1 and 2. Um, that's the biggest movies, you know, um, to ever be made, really. Um, you can't really contest that. Um, he only made five films in his entire film career. He was originally a stage actor. Um, oh my God, it's so humid in New Orleans. He died of lung cancer at 42, and... All five of his movies were nominated for Academy Awards. Um, he was never nominated as an actor, but his movies were. I, I have goosebumps right now. It, it, was, it was very short, but I think the shortness of the documentary reflected his career. Had he not died in 1978, we wouldn't just be talking about Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. We would be talking about Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, and John Cazale. Um, it's so hard to explain what an amazing actor he was. Um, the, the tiny things that he did, his inflections, it just, it made him stand out against these big actors. And at the time, these actors weren't, you know, the names they are today. But he was very fortunate to have befriended both Pacino and De Niro as he wouldn't have been in Dog Day Afternoon or Deer Hunter without those two men. So I thank them for giving us him. Um, I, if you don't have HBO, I don't know what to tell you. Go rent his movies. Um, I'll list them in the bar below, um, but obviously uh, two of them are the godfather. Um, I, I'm, I'm like speechless right now. Um, it makes you want to re-watch every movie he's done, five movies, just to pick up on um, the tiny things that he did that these uh, actors and, and directors and writers and producers, the interview did, um, you know, they brought up. It, it just, we don't have anybody like that now. It's so f filled with just garbage. There's just no one who is, there's just no one to can compare to him as an actor, male or female today um, and I said it before I even watched the film I could only imagine his career what he would have done the successes he would have made if you think about it uh, Pacino and De Niro have made 
terrible movies um, over the last 35 years. They never appeared on screen together in The Godfather because De Niro plays Vita Corleone as a, child, as a young adult and Marlon Brando plays Vita Corleone as an adult. Uh, as a as a as the Godfather is, is the obviously when his children are grown, who are um, Santino, Fredo, Sonny, Fredo, and Michael, Michael being Pacino, Fredo being John Cazale. Um, <laughs> like I said, I, I'm I don't think I've ever been this moved before. There's a documentary called. Um, I'm going to check what it's called out right here. Cannoli. It's a minute. It's It came with the iTunes um, versions of the Godfather um, collection that were, were redone. And it's based on a book written by a non-Italian woman called Leave the gun, take the cannoli, which is a famous line from The God of Father. Uh, and for the one minute, I was in torture. Um, this writer is just terrible, and she should have never been allowed to use that quote. Uh, sorry if you've read that book. I, I couldn't even, I, I couldn't even get past like the first fifty pages. It was just terrible. Um, but. This, I think this, this documentary is like 45 minutes and I, I just, I, I, okay, just watch it. Go to someone's house if you don't have it. Um, come over to my house. I'll keep it on the uh, DVR. But there's just, uh, as a lover of film and a lover of, um, Italian American movies or Italian made, you know, Godfather one and two. It's very hard to, to say which is my favorite, uh, especially now as an older person, and I mean a 28 year old, um, because I used to say it was always number two, but it's it, number three is just terrible, and we all know that. Uh, the only thing good is that Sofia Coppola gets shot on the uh, steps but the the reason you can't pick between the two is because they aren't it's not a sequel as much as it is a completely new movie um, because the the emotion of Al Pacino in the second is so different than his dynamic in the first and I use the two words to because he had, isn't an emotional person in the first one He's an emotional person in the second one, and you don't like him. Um, the Sopranos is the same way. It was about two families. His family that he created um, with Carmela and the family of the Soprano family uh, and, and the balancing act between the two. And this, this could go on for, for hours. Um, but I'm off topic, and the whole point is encouraging you to watch this documentary. And then to watch his films, or to watch his films and then the documentary, or however you want to do it. Uh, it's just, it's too much to explain in the 10 minutes you're allowed on YouTube. But I, uh, I, I respect him and the work he did. And just go watch it. Okay. I, I 